Joining us now to analyze today's headlines is our news analyst, Arun Gupta. He is a journalist and a regular contributor to The Guardian in these times, The Progressive and Truth Out. Hi, Arun. Good morning, Sonali. So Russia has announced it will begin patrolling areas near the U.S. with long-range bombers. The Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu announced in the current situation, we have to maintain military presence in the Western Atlantic and Eastern Pacific, as well as the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. Australia says it has already begun monitoring a Russian naval fleet heading west. Time reports that there may have been, quote, nearly 40 incidents involving Russian forces in a standoff with the West, including allegedly sending a submarine into Swedish waters. The military tensions are a reflection of an ongoing spat between Russia and the West centered on Ukraine, an issue that is likely to be taken up at the upcoming G20 meeting this weekend. Well, Arun, do you think that these reports of Russia sending long-range bombers to the U.S., if they're true, are a dangerous trend, or is this more Cold War-style posturing by Russia? I, I think this is uh, it, it's, it's much more the latter. This is a uh, tit-for-tat, uh, 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 basically, spat going on. Um, the U.S. has expanded NATO up to the borders of Russia when it said after the collapse of the Soviet Union that it wouldn't do so. So it, it effectively has hostile uh, military forces all around Russia. And we should remember also that the U.S. actually put uh, nuclear missiles uh, uh, near Russia. That's what sparked the Cuban uh, Missile Crisis, or near the Soviet Union, rather. And uh, allegedly, General Curtis uh, LeMay, the head of the Strategic Air Command, would send nuclear-equipped bombers over the Soviet Union to try to provoke them uh, uh, so that he could unleash nuclear weapons. He was the subject. He became the subject for Dr. Strangelove. So the U.S. has always been extremely hostile towards the Soviet Union and Russia's. We should see Russia's moves in light of that. Right. Now, just over a week after the midterm elections, the lame duck Congress is taking up an issue that has proven to be very unpopular with the public, and that is approval of the Keystone XL pipeline. Both chambers of Congress have taken up bills to approve the pipeline, sponsored by rival Senate candidates in the key oil and gas-rich state of Louisiana. Democratic Senator Mary Landrieu sponsored the Senate version of the bill, while Republican House member Bill Cassidy, who ran against Landrieu for her Senate seat last week and faces her in a runoff, sponsored the House version of the bill. President Obama has expressed disapproval of the timing of the bills and could wield his veto if the bills pass. Now, Arun, does the fact that two candidates from opposing parties uh, are agreeing on this extremely important fossil fuel initiative just uh, indicate how aligned they are on this? Uh, very much so. Uh, Louisiana basically is a subsidiary of uh, the oil, gas, and uh, chemical industry. It has massive operations. Uh, along uh, the coast of the state, you know, going into the uh, Gulf of Mexico, obviously. And they're basically just doing uh, the bidding uh, of the oil company. And it's especially sadly ironic, uh, given uh, um, that this uh, is the state where the, uh, that was found by the Deepwater Horizon blowout uh, just a few years ago, that they would be proposing uh, this uh, trying to prove this pipeline, which would be uh, absolutely devastating to the uh, global ecology and possibly also result in uh, massive oil spills, as many of these pipelines wind up doing. Mm. And finally, in his last few weeks, a Senate Majority Leader, Harry Reid, has attempted to revive the USA Freedom Act, a bill intended to curb some aspects of the NSA's mass surveillance program, a version that was not as strong as the Senate's passed the House earlier this year. Meanwhile, the Associate Associated Press has just published an expose revealing a quiet and massive expansion of surveillance drones deployed domestically along the U.S.-Mexico border. More than 10,000 drone missions have taken place over the border since last spring, prompting the ACLU to warn against turning the U.S. into a, quote, surveillance society in which people's every move is, quote, monitored, tracked, recorded, and scrutinized by the government. Arun, what are the prospects for curtailing mass surveillance in a Republican-dominated Congress? And is it possible that because Obama backs mass spying, the GOP might be against it? Or is that too much to hope for? Well, one, one might hope so, but we have to remember that uh, Obama and the Republicans actually agree on uh, many things. Uh, they want to 
uh, past the Trans-Pacific Partnership, uh, a free trade deal that would be devastating uh, to uh, jobs in the United States. Um, they both support aggr- support aggressive military policy abroad and, and surveillance at home. Uh, the bill passed by the House uh, was weakened. Um, the original proposal was weakened by the Obama administration, um, and the House was already controlled by the Republicans. So there we can see the fact that they actually do agree on this, and uh, a lot of uh, civil liberties and privacy groups withdrew their support uh, once the Obama administration succeeded in weakening it. So I think uh, uh, re- reforms, uh, real reforms, are, have a dim chance at best. Hmm. Arun Gupta, always a pleasure to have you on. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you. My guest, Arun Gupta, is a journalist and a regular contributor to The Guardian in these times, The Progressive and Truth Out. This is Uprising. When we come back, we'll speak with Ajamu Baraka. He's just returned from the occupied territories, and he'll tell us what he experienced there. Stay tuned.